Does the Bible say anything about current events? It certainly does. It's our focus to be culturally relevant and to communicate a perspective from the scriptures. As Christians, we should have a biblical perspective of the news and be able to share that perspective with others. Welcome to today's News and Biblical Views. On this program, we try to pick up on things that are happening in the news and then show you what the Bible says about those things. One of the things that is happening in our culture today is a proliferation of violence. We're seeing all kinds of amazing things happening and the rise of wickedness and lawlessness. I welcome you and we're grateful for WLYH in Harrisburg broadcasting and also WBPH here in Allentown, but also LCTV in Lancaster carries this program. So we welcome our viewers from all of those different areas. And today our subject is turning pain into gain. We never know when we're going to go through a crisis. Something can happen very suddenly. The Apostle Paul said in Philippians 1.12 that the things that happened to him happened for the furtherance of the gospel. So even though we go through tragic events, God can turn pain into gain and people can come to know the Lord and good can come even from things that seem so evil. Today my special guest is Terry Thompson. I interviewed Terry many years ago, and today we're going to give a recap of some of the things we even talked about many years ago. Terry, welcome to today's News and Biblical Views. Thank you. And so you and your husband came to the Lehigh Valley. Tell us a little bit about your husband, his background, because you've been a pastor, and uh, your family. You have family, you have children, you have grandchildren. <laughs> yes. Okay. I met him in Bible College, Tennessee Temple. We got married and ended up moving to Lynchburg, Virginia, where he finished school and pastored two different churches for a year each. Um, the second one, um, even, during, even during Tennessee Temple, he was running a bus route to pick up uh, children of an ethnic race, you know, bring him dur during the riots. And at our second church in Amherst, Virginia, he had picked up little children, brought them to church, and some other church people said we had decided that there would never be people of that color in our church. And they ended up voting him out. I mean, some voted for him, but there was just one or two extra votes. Okay, he was voted out. But he was determined that uh, God loved everybody, he loved everybody. He was, he had been saved out of, um, well, during his teenage years, kind of a wild life, and then depression, and then realizing God so loved me that um, even the way that I am, Romans 5, 8, um, um, who else loves me and who knows best for my life, and surrendered his life to him. Therefore, God called him to preach and, you know, put him in a couple churches down there. And then when the doors closed in Virginia, someone directed him to come up here and told him, look at First Baptist Church of Easton. And at first he thought, no, they said, nope, we already have a pastor coming. Uh, but we'll take, you know, glad to have you. And then a snowstorm happened and we could not return to Virginia when we were planning to because they shut down all the roads and Joe drove downtown Easton and said, come back to the apartment where we were living and said, God told me that's where he wants me at First Baptist Church. And I said, they said they have their pastor. He says, I don't care what they said. I saw these people that need a shepherd and God says, I want you there trying to the reach Lord. them. So God led him. Wow. Yeah, and we went back to the church and they said, Pastor Thompson, would you be interested in candidating for us? That was in 1975, mm -hmm. and he did, and so we were there for the next 18 years. 18 and years, wow. 
um, moved the church out to uh, Palmer Township, but um, we had started teaching our own children because he didn't want them to learn any lies that the public school teaches. And, Evolution, And you uh, have how atheism. many children? We, have se we had seven. We had three when we moved here, then four more. And so we started our own Christian education department of our church. And that worked wonderfully, which just our, our parents teaching our own kids yeah. and and you have grandchildren too. How many grandchildren? All right, yeah, right now 17. My daughter Katie met her husband in Bible college in Boston and they have nine. Four nine. of them are, are pretty much out of the nest already, yep. but five wow. still at home, she's Ter homeschooling. Terry, think about this. You have 17, mm -hmm. my wife and I have 13. <laughs> That's 30 grandchildren <laughs> among should, us. Oh yeah, it's Isn't fun to amazing? get them all together. <laughs> I mean, well, yeah. Terry, it, it's just so wonderful, and I'm so grateful to know you and to have you at our Wednesday night Bible study, and you play the piano for us, and you've been such a bright light and such an inspiration to so many people. But Terry, on Saturday, April 4th, 1992, mm -hmm. something happened that dramatically changed your life, the lives of your children. Tell us what happened that night. Okay. Joe on Saturday nights would always go out and either walk around our neighborhood or uh, go to some places in the country where he had permission to be on, on farms and walk around and think and pray about what he was going to say the next day. And that night um, I got, when he left I was on the phone with, with a precious friend that I was just trying to encourage in the Lord and bring to Christ. Mm -hmm. And um, at 11.45, there was a knock on our door and police saying, where is your husband? And I said, he went for a walk. Why would he be walking this time of night? Just to get out of the house and all the teenagers and, and have some quiet time with the Lord. And then more questions about uh, what was he wearing and then, um, they came, you know, we invited them in and then they were asking if we had guns in the house and we said, hunting guns locked up in the upstairs and, and the, then after a few minutes, you need to get to Easton Hospital, there's been an accident. And so we got there and waited maybe 45 minutes and the doctor came in and said, I'm so sorry, but your husband's received a fatal gunshot wound to the head. And we had, of course, no clue um, what was happening. Um, some of his pastor friends came and sat with us and sat up all night. And my kids were there with me when, well, the, the four of the older children were with me when we got the news. And uh, I just can't imagine, Terry, the, the pain that came into your heart to hear that you're your husband had just fatally been shot. So these folks that came, pastors and others came and just spent the whole night there at your house. Mm -hmm. And what, what was the age of your children at that time? From uh, age 17, no, 19 down to three. Uh, one just three. turned three and, and one just turned seven and the rest were teenagers. Yeah. Well, Terry, this is a story that traveled not only across uh, the Lehigh Valley, but went into Philadelphia area. A lot of people were aware out in Lancaster. And I mean, this was big news for the Lehigh Valley. And we're gonna take a break, but we're gonna come right back and pick up on the story. So don't go away. We're talking about the subject of turning pain into gain. And I hope that you will stay tuned. Today's news and biblical views is produced and recorded in the studios of Lighthouse TV. Positively different.
Welcome back to today's news and biblical views. And today I am interviewing Terry Thompson. Her husband, Joe Thompson, was the pastor of First Baptist Church in Easton until April the 4th, 1992, when a young man took his life on the street not far from their home. And so we're going to pick up on the subject of turning pain into gain. Terry, after you obviously had that first night and people stayed with you all night, which is just the body of Christ coming together. How yes. wonderful. So tell us maybe a little about the funeral and then an incident that happened when actually the brother and the wife of the young man that took your husband's life, they came to your house. But yes. tell us about the funeral and okay. then the incident. Well, we, we had the funeral in a tent behind the church property and the, there were over 800 people there, maybe a thousand people coming from all over because Joe was such a soul winner. He knocked on doors. He tried to cover all of Easton. He would just tell people about Jesus and how God loved them, but also ask them the question, if you were to untie, if you were to untie your shoelaces, we had a little, he had a little card that he would hand out this morning and the undertaker would untie them at night, where would you spend eternity? Mm. And then he'd say, I can tell you how you can know that you're going to heaven. So there were a lot of people there and the police came during the funeral. He died on Saturday night. This was on Wednesday and police came and told us we have a suspect and we have the gun and we have the bullet and we have a confession from the man that they suspected that did it. And, um, and he was what, like 22 years old, I believe? Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, we didn't know him, didn't know the name, but he was a, a neighbor right in our neighborhood. His family lived there. And then, um, so after the next morning, as I'm packing, I had to pack for the two little guys, but the, uh, the rest of the kids packed for themselves. But there were about 25 or 30 other people going with us down to Tennessee for his burial. And so I was, I couldn't even think. My mind was so mush. I couldn't finish loading a, a folding a load of clothes or anything like that. But we had the teenagers in our church and some of the women were there at the house like answering phone calls and the phone was ringing all the time people stopping by just people d devastated like we were of mm -hmm. course our whole mm -hmm. church family mm -hmm. uh, that we met with on sunday morning after it happened but um then we get a call somebody came and said uh, mrs thompson um the brother of the guy that killed Pastor Joe, wants to come and see you. So I took the phone and talked to him and he said he was so sorry. He knew that his brother needed help. He had done everything he could try to get help, but nobody else, not too many people saw the depth of his, of his um, need and despair. And so I said, well, we're trying to leave for Tennessee. And he said, we just take a few minutes. If you don't mind, my wife and I want to come. And, I said, okay, come on, that's important. Thank you for calling, but come on. And when they came, there were so, I had, we, there were so many people there that it seemed like all the guys were outside. And, and uh, when they arrived, he said he thought that somebody was gonna try to beat him up. He told his wife, you go on in the house and let me talk to these guys out here. Uh, because it's just normal, you mm -hmm. know, the, the Human anger, reaction, yes, anger, and yeah. all that, of course, and we had to we had to work through that ourselves. But anyway, when the wife came in, she said the same thing. We tried to get him help, and um, but she says he he was messed up. But my my husband is a good man, and I said good. I said, do you guys happen to go to church? And she told me, Bap, she told me. I go to Bethel Memorial and I said, and um, they preach the gospel there. I knew that. 
and I said, you're a, I assume you're a Christian, right? And she says, oh yes. And I said, what about your husband? And she says, no, he's not a believer. Um, I know I shouldn't have married an unbeliever, but you're young and you fall in love. And um, she goes, he's, he is a good man. I said, does he go to church with you? She said, Easter and Christmas. And I said, he needs the Lord then, doesn't he? You know, if, mm -hmm. he, if he's not a believer, she says, oh yes. And then she prayed for that all the time. So when he came in and we went through the whole thing again, I said, at least I know my husband's in heaven, so I know I'm gonna see him again because I know where he is. And I said, what about you? If something like that were to happen to you, where would you spend eternity? And he said, I go to hell. And I said, you don't wanna go to hell, do you? He said, no. And I said, well, did anybody ever show you what God says in the Bible, how you can know that you can go to heaven? And he said, no. And I said, would you want me to take a few minutes and show you what I believe, but not just what I believe, what God says? Okay. And so we went into the living room and sat down and I'm like, oh Lord, help me to even think. And is this for real, you know? But I just opened up the Bible, God speaks for himself. And John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. And, uh, and uh, John 1, 12, Jesus came into his own, but his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Also, Romans 3, 23, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. 6, 23, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And First um, uh, John, what is it, 1, 13, 2, 13, I forget right now. But, uh, 12 and 13, about probably. that we may know that we have eternal life. Yes, In the, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. You don't have to think so or hope so. You can know so. And so I said, but the verse that made so much sense to me when somebody explained uh, the gospel to me. I'd been in church, but it took a pastor saying, if you were to die right now, where would you spend eternity? And I said, I think I'd go to heaven. I hope so. You want to know for sure? We went through all those same verses, and then the one that really clicked for me was Romans 10, 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I said, what's to keep you from doing that right now? And he says, you mean here in front of all these people? And I said, okay, nope. I'm not gonna push you into something. I don't even know you, I don't know your heart, but God knows your heart. But it, let me tell you, it's the most important decision of your whole life, because it's the only thing that matters once you die. Where are they now? And uh, I said, so when you get alone with the Lord, if you can, just pray something like this. Dear God, I know I'm a sinner, and I deserve to die and go to hell. And I'm looking at him and he's looking at me and he's repeating after me. I wasn't trying to make him do that then, but man, I just bowed my head and kept going, please forgive me for my sins, come into my heart and save me. He repeated all that. And then I said to him, tell me something. If you were to die right now, where would you spend eternity? And he said, I'd go to heaven, right? I said, don't ask me. He says, wait a minute, we just read all those what do you call them, verses? And that one that said, if I would call on the Lord, he would save me, and I did. So that means I'm going to heaven, right? And I said, amen, yes, and his wife agreed, and, and he got it. I didn't know, but he got it, yes. Amen, Terry. Wow, this is just so amazing. Turning pain into gain. Right away, within a few days, after all of the pain, God opens the door to the one, the brother of the one who took the life of this lady's husband, who was a pastor. We have one more segment, and don't go away, we'll be right back. Watch Lighthouse TV wherever you go. Available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, and Apple TV. You can view our in-house studio productions on demand, or watch what's on the station right now with our 24 seven live stream. Search Lighthouse TV online on your streaming device or go to our website, lighthousetv.org for more information.
Lighthouse TV, positively different. Welcome to today's news and biblical views. Today I am interviewing Terry Thompson. As you heard from her own lips, how her husband was shot to death right near their home. This was on April the 4th, 1992. People all throughout the Lehigh Valley were aware of this. And many, many people across the country heard of this tragic event. But we're looking at the subject of turning pain into gain. And Terry, just so amazing how God gave you that opportunity to lead Sean, the, the brother of, of Todd, to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And uh, did you find a lot of support from, let's say, not only your own church, but the neighborhood, the community, the Lehigh Valley? Tell us about the support you received. Absolutely. Um, churches, I don't know how the words, well, television, um, the local TV station. And there were people there that said, let's check out and see if they had insurance and what, what is going on with the wife and the children. And it's funny because Joe had always, when I said, you don't have life insurance. One time he said to me, if, if that tithe and offering check that I put in the offering plate on Sunday morning is not an example of my faith, and guarantee that God would take care of you and these children if something happened to you, then God is a liar and my faith is in vain because he, he just believed that God would supply our needs and he did, you know? I mean, we lived on a shoestring, but he had taken out a policy right before, the week before, and had done everything that he was supposed to, passed the physical, but he didn't make the first payment because he was gonna make that on Monday morning. So here we were with nothing, and I didn't even know it. I, when he said that, don't even tell me. But uh, all of a sudden, here comes money pouring in from churches. I mean, all kinds of denominations, people that didn't know him. And then um, the local TV station, WFMZ, put a tag on the end of all the news reports that they were opening an account and send money to them. And then my husband's friends let their churches know, and they were hoping that, to raise enough money for the funeral, and if there was enough left, pay our mortgage off. But within a month or even less, more money than the insurance policy would have been, which paid out less, less than 10% in the end because of fiduciary trust and so forth. But um, yeah. God supplied our needs above and beyond that, and also with the family turning in their homeowner's policy, another knock on the door with a big, with a big check. God gave enough money for me to put those children in Christian school because our people were so devastated we couldn't, we couldn't even operate the next year and raise them in Bethlehem Christian School, Lehigh Valley Christian High School, and um, yep. Just amazing. amazing, again, another example, Terry. Your husband was a man of great faith, and the Bible says you have not because you ask not, and you weren't even asking. Mm -mm. Other people were being moved by the Spirit of God to help you, but the Bible says, my God shall supply some of your need, all of your needs. A large portion of your need. All of your needs. All of your needs, according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. This is the body of Christ at work, touching people's lives. I remember how we were touched at Calvary, and I know Calvary was anxious well, to help support oh, yes. and your family. Turning pain into gain. God was at work through all of this. Mm -hmm. What would you say, we have maybe another minute or a minute and a half, what were some of the lessons that God has taught you? Here we are moving ahead many years, what, 31 years mm -hmm. since this incident. Mm -hmm. What were some of the lessons God taught you? Uh, I would say God is faithful. I claimed Isaiah 54, that he would be a husband to me, a provider, a teacher to my, chi my children. And, and he has. My kids grew up and followed the Lord, all of them to a, a Bible college or into ministry. And uh, of course, 
we're always praying for, there's always somebody to be praying for, draw closer to the Lord. Amen. But um, yeah, that, and but God gave me new, new friends. Um, I, I couldn't even stay, we, we couldn't stay at our church. Mm -hmm. uh, it just wasn't the right fit. Yep. And God has opened up, you know, so many yep. doors, okay. And, and Terry, just real quickly, what is one of your great desires right now in regard to this young man, who's not such a young man anymore, who took the life of your husband? My desire is that he would come to know the Lord. His whole family has come to know the Lord, and God put us in the same church with his mom and dad. We're close friends now, and his, their, their children are friends with my children, have ministered to us, and you know, but uh, we are still praying, and I've even written letters, and we'll keep in touch with him for his family's sake, for Christ's yep. sake, for yep. if nothing else, that he comes to the Lord. He hasn't yet, but Amen. the rest of the family has, and Amen. what a blessing. Terry, thank you so very much for your willingness to share. This is a, it's a painful story, and yet it's for God's glory, so thank you. Yeah, thank Amen. you. Well, here you can see how God can turn pain into gain. I don't know what you might be going through, but I can tell you this. God loves you, as Terry brought out very clearly. He loves you. Jesus Christ died on the cross for you. If you were to die today, where would you spend eternity? Do you know Jesus Christ? He doesn't want you to perish and go to hell. He wants you to be born again. He wants you to be saved. He'll forgive your sins if you will repent. Whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. I encourage you right now, call on the name of the Lord. Repent of your sins. Be sorry. Turn away from sin. Ask Jesus Christ to come into your life. Ask him to draw near to you. Maybe you're a believer and you need to come closer to him. Renew your commitment to Jesus Christ. He'll turn your pain into gain. Thanks for watching today's program. God bless you.